Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, April 8th. I'm Wayne Pratt. The coronavirus continues to reach into all areas of Missouri. Two workers at the St. Louis County Jail have tested positive, and a couple of detainees are under observation. The Kansas City Star reports a man in his 50s at a prison in St. Joseph has become the first Missouri inmate to die of COVID-19. Also, Bi-State Development says one of its workers has died of the disease. The transit agency also says 14 other workers have tested positive. Officials at a nursing home in St. Charles confirmed five residents have died of coronavirus complications. More than 40 and eight workers at Frontier Health and Rehabilitation have tested positive. Those numbers come as state officials report at least 49 homes and assisted living facilities in Missouri have workers and residents who tested positive for COVID-19. The St. Louis Archdiocese is extending a suspension of public masses through April. The co-founder of Twitter and Square, who is a St. Louis native, says he will donate $1 billion of his wealth to fight COVID-19. The gift from Jack Dorsey is the largest pledge to date by a private individual in response to coronavirus. The Opera Theater of St. Louis has canceled its 2020 festival season because of the pandemic. General Director Andrew Jorgensen says, quote, it would not be safe to convene hundreds of artists, staff, and audience members night after night. Here are the numbers. Health officials in Missouri are reporting the largest one-day jump in deaths from COVID-19. There have been at least 53 in the state, an increase of 14 in just one day. Missouri officials also say there are slightly more than 3,000 positive results out of nearly 34,000 COVID-19 tests. In Illinois, state health officials report more than 13,500 positive results out of more than 68,000 tests. There have been 380 deaths. In just a few minutes, our Rachel Lippman and Shayla Farzan will report on how religious leaders are planning to celebrate Passover and Easter during the pandemic. As we mentioned, at least 49 long-term care facilities in Missouri have residents or workers who have tested positive for COVID-19. Those numbers are from the State Department of Health and Senior Services. As St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen reports, a lack of government oversight makes it difficult to know how nursing homes are protecting residents. Last month, state and federal authorities told nursing homes to block access to visitors and increase hand washing and screenings for symptoms. But to limit coronavirus exposure, the state has stopped sending surveyors to check on how nursing homes are taking care of residents. Marjorie Moore directs Voice, a long-term care advocacy group. She says nursing home residents have to speak up if workers aren't taking necessary precautions. And we have a lot of residents who can't do that, but um, it's so important right now that they are able to advocate for themselves. State health officials aren't identifying nursing homes that have COVID-19 cases. Disclosing that information violates a state statute that protects patient privacy. I'm Eli Chen. St. Louis Public Radio. Both chambers of the Missouri legislature will be in session today. They are working on approving a budget and then sending it to Governor Mike Parson. House and Senate members are gathering despite a statewide stay-at-home order. Legislators say the state constitution prohibits votes from being taken outside the Capitol. The lawmakers are practicing social distancing and most are wearing masks. St. Charles County is struggling to purchase masks and other personal protective equipment for its responders during the outbreak. County Executive Steve Elman is hoping to receive federal funding to purchase more. We've got police officers that uh, they don't know what to expect with this, with this virus. They know what to expect if somebody has a gun shooting at them, but they don't know exactly what to expect if somebody has the virus breathing on them. Elman says it will be easier to purchase the equipment once the Missouri General Assembly approves a supplemental budget. You can listen to our full interview with Elman. He is a guest on the Politically Speaking podcast, which is live now on our website, stlpublicradio.org. The federal government is expected to give St. Louis County more than $170 million for coronavirus relief. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Julio Donahue reports, the county will have to wait 
to see how it can spend the money. The federal government won't release its rules for coronavirus funding for another few weeks, but County Executive Sam Page says many existing coronavirus bills will be covered. The county put up $7 million to purchase personal protective equipment. It's also paying to quarantine first responders and homeless people in hotels. Page says the county also wants to use federal funds to pay for police officers and other employees overtime. I'm Julie O'Donohue, St. Louis Public Radio. Illinois' governor is not ruling out having people arrested for failing to follow directives aimed at slowing the spread of COVID-19. J.B. Pritzker says law enforcement might need to get tougher after the state has told people to, quote, do the right thing. The governor also says residents should call police if neighbors are violating the stay-at-home order. The coronavirus outbreak has upended nearly every aspect of normal life, including religious worship. The Jewish holiday of Passover begins tonight at sundown. Normally, families and friends would gather for the Seder, a retelling of the exodus from Egypt. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman reports, the coronavirus pandemic has forced people to adopt new ways of conducting the ancient ritual. Lev Gooder and his wife, Katie Rice Gooder, were originally supposed to celebrate Passover with his family on the East Coast. We were going to fly out actually a week uh, away from the actual Seders, but on a weekend, and we could all rendezvous in New Jersey and have a big Seder there. But the virus quickly altered those plans. Now everyone will be connecting instead via the video conferencing tool Zoom. The mental family will also be relying on Zoom this year. Even though it will allow the extended family to participate in a Seder together for the first time in years, it won't be the same for 13-year-old Audrey. I really enjoy getting to be with my family um, on holidays because we all have a good time and we all eat a lot of food and that it will be sad to miss. More observant Jews do not use electronics on holidays, which rules out Seders on platforms like Zoom or Facebook Live. And large family gatherings are out because of stay-at-home orders. Rabbi Yosef Landa, the regional director of Chabad of Greater St. Louis, realized that meant many people would need to lead a Seder for the first time. So his organization created Seder in a Box. It includes wine or grape juice, the Seder plate, and all the ritual foods. We want to provide them the implements and the information that they need in order to do that in a meaningful way. B'nai Amuna, a synagogue in West St. Louis County, is offering something similar. And its senior rabbi, Carney Shalom Rose, has been teaching online classes about the holiday to help people prepare. Rose finds himself reflecting this year on the phrase that concludes every Seder, next year in Jerusalem. For us as Jews, Jerusalem is always at the forefront of our mind. Of course, it's the eternal capital of the Jewish people. But it's also a metaphor, right, that next year will always be better. The rebirth promised by spring may come later this year, Rose says, but it will arrive. I'm Rachel Lippman, St. Louis Public Radio. With many churches closed in St. Louis, some congregations are turning to technology to celebrate Easter this Sunday. St. Louis Public Radio's Shayla Farzan has that story. The Cathedral Basilica in St. Louis was filled with song and prayer on Palm Sunday as usual. But the pews were empty and will be throughout Holy Week. Late last month, the Archdiocese of St. Louis suspended all public masses due to the coronavirus outbreak. Since then, thousands of congregants have been tuning in for live stream services. Monsignor Henry Breyer, the cathedral's rector, says even though congregants can't gather or receive communion on Easter this year, the services still provide a sense of community. This live streaming enables people to feel connected to their faith, to their church, because it's home. It's home for their faith. The Gathering, a United Methodist Church in St. Louis, will also stream their Easter services. Pastor Matt Miofsky says they had to cancel an Easter celebration they planned at Chaffetz Arena for their 5,000 members. But he says where they worship doesn't really matter. It can be celebrated anywhere. It can be celebrated in a garden, in a cave, in a stadium, or in people's living rooms. 
it is a very different kind of service. But what's really cool is, you know, the, the message is the same. Miofsky says the story of Easter is one of resurrection and hope, and that resonates with people right now. People like Jennifer Haynes, who says Easter is central to her faith. But she knows her two young daughters won't be able to sit through a live stream service. What I might do is watch something later, you know, maybe during nap time. Haynes is planning something else to make it special for her two-year-old, a solo Easter egg hunt at their home in St. Charles. She's so young, but she knows something is wrong. And so I want to, as much as possible, give her something to celebrate. She says seeing her daughter happy helps relieve leave some of the grown-up anxiety she's feeling. I'm Shayla Farzan, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Maria Altman edited that report and the one from Rachel Littman. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house.